Hello, this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com. Today we're going to be thinking about things. Alright, so, things to think about. I'm going to do a bunch of these. I think it's a good idea to just try and bring up some things that everyone should go over before they get a tattoo. This is clients or artists alike. This is just simple things, right? Breaking, breaking down the process of doing a tattoo, doing a consult, doing the healing, creating aftercare, whatever. This is things to think about to hopefully tailor the experience better to your specific clientele, right? So the first thing we're going to think about today, things I want to think about. Number one. Okay. All right, number one, how much effort does this require? So I know I split my capitals, bite me. When we get into doing a tattoo, what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance value and time, right? For the person, the person's trying to only spend a certain amount of money to stick inside of a budget. But they want to try to maximize the things that are coming out of it. And as a tattooer, when you're doing this, you're trying to maximize your time because, I mean, the more time you spend sitting around waiting for people or maybe not booking things in so much order, the more money that you're going to lose out on because this is a business, right? That's just how things work. It's an exchange of money for a product. So when we're getting into how much effort does this require, <clears throat> there's multiple points inside the day that we need to think about, right? First one is always going to be with our initial contact, the consult. The second one's going to be the prep. The third one's going to be the tattoo. And the fourth one is going to be, of course, aftercare, right? You notice how I put a dash and a, an arrow on each one of these? It's because it, it's going to lean more towards one person versus the other, okay? So how much effort is going to go into it? Now, myself, I do really extreme consults with people. On average, we'll have two to three consults at minimum before we even start the uh, but to me, the consult is the most important thing. First off, before I even tattoo anyone, we'll have a consult where we just meet and greet, right? We try to talk to each other, see if we can communicate well, and before we even get into discussing the tattoo. Because there's nothing like both people not getting along and being forced into this position where you just don't want to do the tattoo, right? <clears throat> On the client's side, it's really hard to pay money to a person you hate, especially when they're just good and done hurting you, and maybe you don't even have the thing that you wanted at the end of it, right? On the artist side of stuff, having somebody taking up your space in your chair and making you either feel uncomfortable, unwanted, or undervalued can make the job really difficult, especially if your entire day is filled with that. So I need to put a ton of effort on my side, in my experience, into the console before we even get into this product that we're trying to create. Because if the person isn't invested, if they're not happy, if they've got baggage, if they've got these other things, it's going to make it really hard for me to do my job effectively. And at the same time, if they don't like me or my process, they shouldn't get my job done. They should work with me, right? Like, this is common sense. We should not work together. So, first things first, the effort for me is always going to be number one. And this is artist specific, right? Consult, you need to put in, like, maximum effort. There's nothing worse and getting into a tattoo, doing the design, having somebody come in on the artist side and they're like, I don't like it. And you're like, oh, I spent all this time and you have all of this energy and stuff and then you like lash out in them in some way, right? Which is awful because they've come into this place to permanently mark their body. And if you would have taken another 10 minutes, this could have been avoided, right? And think about that. These people are coming in, they're paying you money to do a service. You're treating them poorly because you're frustrated. There already is a power dynamic when somebody walks in the door, right? They're told that you're an artist and they shouldn't be bothered and need to have them direct you. And like they have so much trust in you, even if they don't know you. If you've not put in the time to even get to know them, it can make the experience really poor, right? <clears throat> Next step is going to be prep. I have an error on this one. It's going to be more client-centric, right? If we do a good consult as an artist, we really just absolutely put our time in there, right? And we're trying to do our best to make sure that the client is going to get what they want. The client has to be able to bring us the things that we need to create that design. The experience whatever they want right so on the prep side of this the consultation should give us a list of things that we need from the client so that they can bring in things here right if they have a health concern if they have a very complex design if they have other things they need we've got to be able to put that on them and let them prepare because they're the ones who are going to be sitting 
through the tattoo. And if you compare that with the actual process of doing the tattoo, because the artwork creation can be really, really technical. It can be difficult, it can be time consuming, it can be all this stuff. But sitting through a tattoo is far more technical and trying and awful and blah, right? Just because the person's in pain. I mean, you can be in pain when you're tattooing. I mean, my back kills me some days, but that person, we got to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be in a way worse spot than we are, right? They're going to have to prepare more than us mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, right? So we need to see maximum effort given by the client before we even get to the tattoo that they're willing to get it done, right? The tattoo, when we get to it, the next step here is, is an even share, right? There has to be good communication. There has to have been good consultation, a good prep before we even get to the tattoo. When we get to the tattoo, this is coasting, right? Coasting for the client and we're working for the artist. By now you should have everything figured out and it's paint by numbers. This is a Lisa Frank fuzzy poster, six different colors, that's it. Should not be difficult. You should know how you're going to approach it, where it's going to go, how big it's going to be, how much time it's going to take, how much it's going to cost. Everything's starting to be figured out by this time. This should be the easiest part of the entire process, right? The only thing we really have to worry about when we're actually getting to this, if we're not doing art and planning and all this other stuff, is making sure our technique is perfect because that's going to influence the next step. On the client side, you got to sit well, you got to be prepared, you got to do everything you're supposed to do because that's also going to influence the next step, right? The aftercare is going to be a split thing. There's absolutely nothing that we can do as a tattooer once that tattoo leaves the shop to ensure that it's healed correctly. We can do our best to educate and inform the clients. We can guarantee that these clients, they can say everything they're going to do. They can guarantee that everything is just going to be perfect, but it doesn't matter. They walk out the door, go home, they've got a dog, the dog looks at the tattoo, they get a staph infection, the tattoo looks like crap. They get scratched by a cat, it's not good. They trip and fall, something's not good. They get into a fight, they go to a bar, and the dude did that. You got drunk right after a tattoo, went to the bar, got into a fight, screwed up the tattoo nothing we can do so this one is just it's all up the client's stuff right this is right up their wheelhouse client's problem now if you're somebody who loves your artwork especially if you've done all of this stuff and you put in maximum effort trying to develop all this stuff through the consult through the prep through everything and it comes back and looks like crap it's going to destroy you realistically this is not your problem anymore when people get a tattoo it is their body their artwork it's theirs then you've completed your stuff you've walked away establish good ground rules before it gets done especially if you know you've done like a really good job your technique was perfect you expect it to heal out well if it doesn't heal out well stand up for yourself i mean don't be a dick right but just be like no like i know what i'm doing i know that this should have been good i need to know why it didn't heal out well now if you have worked really hard especially through the consult and the prep and you've developed a good rapport with the person you have excellent communication they should trust you enough to be honest with you if they are not honest with you <clears throat> there's nothing you can do but you should be able to trust them through this right if, if the aftercare does not succeed you got to ask a few questions one is your aftercare working is it right for that client based on where you live their ancestry or genetic background their lifestyle like what they do did you account for that when you're doing your tattoo right did you do bad in the tattoo was your technique maybe a little bit off maybe you maybe chewed up the skin a little bit maybe you didn't or maybe it's just that time of year who knows maybe it just something happened it's catastrophic just didn't you know it's something you didn't expect like the dog thing or getting in a fight or whatever right at that point it, it really is the client's problem you can guide them do what you can to make sure that it's going to be good and uh that's that's the best one of the, one of the things we do to try and counteract this at least on my side is I have a, a check-in with every client that I do. Two days out from the tattoo when it's completed, I have them send me a picture of the tattoo, how they're taking care of it. I want them to give me a detailed thing. We have a phone call or a text, and I want them to check in. Is there any problems? Do you have itching, redness? Does it look like it's infected? Is there anything weird happen? Does a dog look at your tattoo? Like, I want to know what's going on, because if we can catch it in those first 48 to 72 hours, then something is going on. We can help minimize the things that are going to happen afterwards, right? So that's it. Things to think about today. And going forward with every tattoo you do, figure out how much effort that this is going to require. Pass that, how much effort do you want to put into these things? Make it very clear, the whole way through your process, what you are going to do and how much effort you're going to put in, and your client will thank you later on. This is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com, signing off.